Uh, Tybo, Tybo, uh, another Discord member. Uh, you mentioned Throttle Expo last stream. You said you don't like to use it. I've been using it. It's improved my flying greatly. Putting a throttle limit on my stick makes it so I can't use all my power, but the Expo lets me have all the power and control. What are the cons that you're thinking of? So you're right about the difference between Throttle Expo and Throttle Scaling. The Throttle Scaling cuts off the top of the throttle, whereas Expo lets you access all of it. Um, I used Expo for a while back when I was a beginner and I was struggling with throttle control. And at first I found that it helped me. It helped me in one thing, but it made me bad at other things. So let's say I've got Throttle Expo and I set that Throttle Expo so I can hover and I have a lot of resolution at the hover point. Now I pitch forward. Do you see that depending on my pitch angle, my hover point on the throttle is gonna be different. If I'm hovering flat, my hover point might be at 30%, but if I pitch forward to 45 degrees and I'm flying forward, my hover point might be 35 or 38 or 40%, right? And so setting the, the, the midpoint of the Expo there isn't a perfect midpoint for the Expo where you have all the resolution you need right around the hover point because sometimes you're going fast and sometimes you're going slow. Okay, that was one thing I noticed. The other thing I noticed was, so you're flying. Now you've got your throttle Expo set perfectly, right? You're hovering, you're, you're, you're holding altitude. And now you dive into a turn. And when you dive into a turn, a lot of the times what you'll do is you'll back off the throttle, you'll pre-turn, and then you'll you'll punch the throttle and try and get yourself moving, okay? If you watch yourself or you watch people when they're turning, a lot of times there is a sudden increase in the throttle, maybe some stabs on the throttle, trying to find the exact point to sort of float yourself through the turn. And what I found was that Throttle Expo made that significantly harder to be precise because the Throttle Expo giving me resolution in the sort of hover part of the throttle curve, it cost me resolution in the I'm trying to go through a turn smoothly part of the, thr the throttle curve. I guess my argument would be that ultimately you use all of the throttle. Okay? And you may not, maybe you don't use above 80% very much and you don't use below 30% very much, but you use a lot of the throttle. And, and the way the Throttle Expo works in Betaflight is it's very difficult to have all the resolution you need where you need it. That was my experience. Um, whereas, here, and here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, and this is this is going to be a little bit mean. So take it take it with a with a with a grain of salt. Take it with a, you know a little tongue in cheek. You know why you can't maintain altitude? Because you suck as a pilot. You're a terrible pilot. Stop being a baby. Get rid of the throttle expo and just learn to fly your gosh dang drone. You know what? I don't have throttle expo. I don't have any problem holding altitude because I can fly a drone. So that's another way to look at it. Okay. <laughs> like... Like, on some level, it's just a... You will be able to maintain your altitude. Today, you can't. If you keep practicing, you will be able to do that. But if you set up Throttle Expo, you will never learn to actually do it right. You will constantly be struggling. Oh, I gotta get my Expo curve exactly right. Or you could just have a linear throttle and learn to do it. Okay, please, please take that with a sense of humor. And, and like, I'm just trying to make an inflammatory live stream clip with like a grain of truth in it. And I said it the jackass way instead of the kind way. Uh, Chad is asking, what about flying cinematic where you're not expecting to do dives? You're not expecting to. Like, yeah. is it okay there? So my, my argument about sort of helping aids, helping aids, right, is this. If, if a helping aid makes you more effective at your job and has no downsides, there's no shame in using it, right? 
Like people talk about, should I fly in angle mode versus acro mode? And a lot of times I'll say, just learn to fly in acro mode. It's not because I'm an elitist who looks down on people who fly angle mode. I'm losers. It's because angle mode makes it harder for you to do the things with the drone that you want to do. It makes it harder to get the shots you need, harder to get the mo- the camera moves you need. If you could do everything you needed to do in angle mode, then I'd say, screw it. Do it in angle mode. I don't care. Just get the job done. I like to make the analogy, um, it comes from shooting sports, right? There are people who say, oh, you should do everything with iron sights because that's what real men use. And then there's people who are like, you know what? If, if I pull the trigger and the bullet goes in the target... What do you care how I did it? I'll use a red dot scope. I'll use something like that. That's like, well, I mean, what are we trying to accomplish here? Are we testing your ability to use a specific skill, like flying angle mode or ac- sorry, acro mode? Or are we testing your ability to accomplish something with the drone, like go from point A to point B? And if it's the latter, then I don't care if you use angle mode. Now, I would argue that a lot of the time, Throttle Expo has downsides, maybe even downsides that you don't recognize because you're so enraptured with the fact that it solved the problem you were aware of, you kind of don't notice the other problems it is creating yet, right? Maybe. But if if you stipulate that we're in a situation where a, a Throttle Expo has no downsides, by all means use it. I'm not an elitist gatekeeper. I'm not a purist who says you can only do it one way and any other way is invalid. I just hate to peep. A lot of times you see a beginner. Like, again, I took my son to the shooting range a few months ago. First time he ever shot a pistol. 20 minutes. I looked at my watch and said, how long have we been here? 20 minutes into uh, into the session, he turned to me and he said, I think the sights on this gun are not set up right. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm, I'm lining up the sights just how you told me to do. And I'm pulling the trigger. And... The bullets are going down and to the right. They're not going on the on the bullseye. And I said, you're pulling the shot. You're pulling the shot. And he said, well, I don't think so. I think the sights are messed up. So many times people start and they're trying to learn a skill and they are bad at the skill because they just started learning it. And then they try and fix their equipment and they try and solve it with, a, with, a, with an, an aid of some sort. When the answer is that if you just keep at it, you will just learn the skill and you'll be able to do it without the aid. So one of the downsides of, of aids like that is that they hamper your own progression, your innate progression. But if the aid helps you accomplish what you need to accomplish and doesn't have any substantial downsides, then by all means, go for it. I, I cracked up. It's such a trope that somebody is missing their shots and says, I think the oh, scope's out. It's, scope needs to be zeroed. It was literally the first time he'd ever shot a gun. And literally 20 minutes into the session, he was like, I think the sights on this are out. And I was like, you are a trope right now. You are a, you are a meme. You don't even know it. <laughs> anyway.